Um, I'm actually very happy now to say that I'm being joined by former Conservative Party leader Sir Ian Duncan Smith. Um, Sir Ian, thank you very much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Really appreciate your time. Um, Sir Ian, there's a story in the Telegraph, traditionally a very Conservative newspaper, saying that the way the Conservatives have launched their election campaign is pretty poor and any more blunders and they are going to lose even more votes. What do you make of that? Well, uh, it's classic sort of uh, uh, Westminster bubble nonsense, really. Uh, yeah, all sorts of things happen at the beginnings of campaigns. I've seen so many of them now. What uh, about 11 uh, uh, elections? Uh, little bits and things happen. Things don't always go right when you launch a campaign uh, in terms of the visuals. But the reality is about the facts. And I think the truth is most of the public um, looking at what the retail offer is from both uh, major parties and plus the others to decide whether or not they think we as the Conservatives are more likely to be able to continue with that growth and structure bringing interest rates down and inflation down and getting the economy growing faster than the other nations, which is what's happening at the moment, or whether Labour, actually we don't really know what Labour's policy is, but Labour say they can be the ones or will be the ones. I'd like to know how they're going to do it. Well, we are waiting to talk to or listen to Rachel Reeves, but, you know, she obviously hasn't turned up. You have. Thank you very much for that as well. But, I mean, it has to be said that this it was it was an election that was sprung on us. I mean, I don't think anyone was really expecting it. And to launch it by standing in a rain shower without an umbrella, I mean, the optics of that just started, you know, it off on so the wrong foot. And we'll never forget that now. Well, if you don't mind me saying so, I think that's for you lot in the media to debate. Not a single constituent, and I've done a lot of campaigning in the last five years and a lot over the last week, and not one single constituent has raised that issue with me. What they're interested in is what happens to their lives and what is actually the choice all about, and that's what changes things. Sure, you know, you might have done it slightly differently or maybe uh, we should have done it inside, but these things are marginal issues. I'll be honest with you, this is really all about... Who is going to be able to make sure that people's lives are ultimately going to be better? We've come out of two of the biggest crashes you can possibly imagine, far bigger, by the way, as I saw earlier on one of your commentators saying he compared it to the banking crash. This was way bigger. We've shut down global economies, for God's sake, for nearly two years. And then we had the invasion of Ukraine. I've been on the front line in Ukraine on three occasions mm. helping with a charity. So these are big crashes that led to the uh, massive problems with the economy. So these are what we're trying to get through. <laughs> the government is doing that and moving on. So all I say is compare what each each one of the parties would want to do. And, and, and that's the way you do it. Not so look Ian, at whether, with, with all respect, you, you say that, you know, the gaffes, you know, and there have been plenty of them, um, you know, the, the rain being one of them going to wows and talking about football when they haven't qualified for the Euros. These are making a difference because in a poll today for, I think, the Mail on Sunday, um, you know, people are taking notice. People have been asked, you know, who has had the best campaign launch so far? 18% of respondents said are um, Rishi Sunak, while well, 40% said Keir Starmer. So these are getting through. This is a message that people are picking up on. I just don't think it's to do with what makes a difference in their lives. I generally don't. Yeah, you'd love to be wonderfully slick uh, and brilliant at this. Sometimes things don't go right. But the key question is, do you get the messages across and do people believe you? And uh, that's the key element. So with respect, uh, I wasn't really here to talk about this. I was here, I thought, to talk about the national service idea. Right, well, we can certainly ask you about that national service idea. I mean, we, I think a lot of us woke up this morning and saw the, um, the, the front pages of the newspapers and were surprised that that had come up. Um, it, it does sound, though, that the devil is in the detail and we're not really being given the detail. Accusations are that this is another idea that's been scratched out on the back of a fag packet. Uh, I think it's a brilliant idea. Uh, I've been arguing for it for some time. It's not national service in the same way that we had it before. It's not all about um, going into the military. There is an element of the military. But the main part about this is something I think is being debated by a lot of young people as well, to give them a better start <clears throat> in life and to put something back into the community. So working... With community groups and charities uh, is really important. I set up the Centre for Social Justice. We work all over the country with small community groups and charity. They're always talking about getting more young people involved is what they want to do. Uh, it's, it's giving people a sense of themselves as well. I served in the military. I went on an active service. And I tell you, I learned more about people and about myself uh, in those areas uh, because that teaches you self-discipline and understanding how you can respect others. It will also bring religious communities in the UK together in a way that we've got too divided. 
I think this is excellent. And the old National Service was all military. This is only a small part military, but this, the principles of that are to be embedded in this. And I think it's a great idea. Sure, there's more to be discussed, as the government said, a royal commission. But I think this is absolutely excellent. And I think most people will recognize that this will help a lot. Uh, and also, by the way, I'd extend it even further. I'd talk about 15 and 16-year-olds being involved because, you know, a lot of those kids in okay. different communities end up in street gangs, in criminal Sorry. work. And I think the real thing is to get them out and give them a sense of purpose Interesting. too. So you think we should actually extend this to even younger people? So, Ian, thank you very much. When, we, we have, we've when, run out of time. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. That was uh, Ian Duncan-Smith. Um,